security is the biggest thing at Cisco Live this week. Every session I think I've watched has some element of security. Yeah. Uh, the announcements and the keynotes had just so much to do about security. So I thought, Eric, having you here today as we kind of wind, out, wind down the last day of Cisco Live yeah. would be really interesting to start talking about all the announcements that, we, there's too much to talk about, I think, from the yeah. keynotes overall, yeah. but let's get into the security pieces. What, what stood out to you the most from this week? Yeah. First, I got to say, you look remarkably well rested for the last day of Cisco Live, <laughs> so well done. Clearly, you behaved this week, but in all seriousness, this has been such an incredibly exciting Cisco Live, and what I think is, is really interesting is I think we're, we're hitting on all cylinders across the portfolio, and the announcements Jonathan made around the network and cloud, the announcements Liz talked about around how we're expanding our full stack observability offer, but to me, security is the star of the show, without question. And, and I think the launch of the Cisco Secure Access Solution, where we are leapfrogging the industry in what we can offer from a comprehensive hybrid work solution, specifically looking at that SSC stack, and then extending security leadership into the cloud with, uh, with the cloud native uh, firewall capabilities. Again, that ability to translate between IP address and cloud service back and forth between the different cloud providers, I mean, that's game changing. Absolutely, and one of my favorite parts of of this entire stack that has been discussed has been meeting with some of the folks from OutShift mm -hmm. and really talking about how Cisco is pushing into the relevancy for app developers and, uh, and DevOps teams, specifically in that you know we have always been thought of as a like network firewall company. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we know internally that that is not all that we do. Yeah. But how do you convey that to teams that are outside of the typical network? And what we've seen with Panoptica yeah. and our, our push into the, the CNAP suite overall, yeah. that this concept of an attack path mm -hmm. idea where we're really going to start looking at how do we help you identify, like we've started doing with software-defined access and things mm -hmm. where we can say, here's some prescriptive things that we know in advance that we can tell you, rather than saying, here's all this data, yeah. best of luck to you. How, exactly. does, how does that really, how do you think that really helps out the customers we're talking to? So you know I love my stats, right? So again, Please. 500 million new applications coming online in the next three years, right? We're going to have over 100 billion endpoints in the global internet, probably within the next six. So again, the attack surface is broadening so much and there's nothing that is common except for the network. So we shouldn't be shy about you know, talking about our leadership in the network and what that means. But again, this is not your father's or your grandfather's you know, firewall conversation, <laughs> right? Because again, this is this whole concept of shift left. Right, we got to be thinking about security from the application developer's viewpoint. And again, that's what I love about Panoptica, where we're embedding application security at the API level into these cloud native languages, because developers aren't thinking about, oh my gosh, am I, am I plugging every possible hole in that, every possible attack surface on every possible client? They're thinking about how do I drive innovation faster? So again, let's take that off their plates, and I think Panoptica, the broader CNAP suite that we're talking about, is so critical in doing that. You know, Speaking of this, so yesterday I got a chance to talk to Kelsey Hightower. Oh yeah, uh, he was sitting right yeah. where you were sitting right now. Ooh, I feel uh, I feel really privileged. You know? I yeah. mean, like he yeah. was here. Yeah, um, and he was on stage. And a lot of what he was talking about was exactly what you touched on. This idea of we have to be able to deliver security in a way that enables everybody at the company, every team, to use their unique insight to say, yes. this is what I'm going to do. So I almost thought of it like in the John Doerr world of OKRs. Mm -hmm. We set an objective of how secure we want to be, and everyone gets their own key result they get to focus on and say, yeah. you know what, I've got Panoptica, I can do it this way. Yeah. And another team, team can do it this way. So everyone can try to like meet it. We're not sitting back saying, you know what, we're going to solve this problem with a firewall. Exactly. We're going to solve this problem with DNS security. Yeah. We have a lot of ways, it's not just a scatter shot is actually we're enabling a lot of people with their own mindsets to say, here's how we're going to solve for these different layers of security. Exactly. In and but without needing to necessarily think, I am a security practitioner. We're all security practitioners, right. and it's incumbent upon every individual that's part of the the, the service delivery um, chain, the value chain, to be thinking about their part in that. But it's funny. We were like almost five minutes into this conversation, and you haven't said two letters, and I'm shocked. What am I missing? AI. AI, I mean, <laughs> I have had- I'm trying to hold back because I'm just, you? I've been spending all my time with Annie Hardy this week talking, oh, okay, okay, talking okay, about it. I'm like, fair so enough. I feel like I'm doing nothing but talking about AI, so I'm like, I need to calm down a little yeah. bit, but let's talk about AI. Let's talk about AI, because AI, again, think about this. AI in the nefarious actor's hands. If we put Jat, 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 Jat GPT on creating, creating attacks, that sounds dangerous, that sounds scary, right. that sounds Skynet level. It does. Right? But if we can turn the power of AI into the hands of the defenders, put the, the, the security bad actors, or put the, the nefarious bad actors on their heels, 
and leverage solutions like our XDR solution that we announced yes. at RSA. Yep. We, we, we leverage the capabilities in our endpoints. Again, think about the, the number of data points, and Liz said this in the keynote. Mm -hmm. Again, I, you know I love to do my Dr. Evil thing. 600 billion different, uh, different attack, um, uh, attack uh, uh, data points that they're collecting every day. Right. We can take that intelligence, we can, we can build AI around that, and then turn the tables on those bad actors. That is so critical. And it becomes, it becomes so much less of, well I bought Nest, I don't want to pick on this company, but I bought, a Net, I bought Nestus, I ran a scan, and yeah. now I'm all green. Right. Things are good. It's like, no, that's a misnomer. You're green right then. You're green, and you're green yeah. for just this list of things. Yes. To your point, yeah. why not use what a, a bad actor might use? Yeah. We'll pick on ChatGPT, GPT, but it can be any generative right. yeah, AI yeah, that's right. looking at your data yeah. and say, hey, what am I missing here? You tell me what I'm missing based on the data, and it can come back saying, oh, well I noticed you have this attack path. Exactly. Well shoot, I might want to go look at that and figure out, and then anyone in your company can start, I'll just use their tools against them and just tell me what I need to go look at, and then we can go look at those use cases and try to solve for those, rather than saying, I'm the Dutch boy putting my finger in the dike, and like, <laughs> I filled all the holes, we're, we're good, right? The holes you know about. And that's just key. I mean, again, we're in a zero-sum game when it comes to security. 100%. It isn't about what we can, what we know. It's about what we don't know that's going to hurt yes. or modern organizations. And that's what I think is also great about. We're talking about AI in terms of the protection, but think about making people's lives better. Think about that firewall administrator, the security administrator. All they're doing is managing the security policies, right? right. And again, what they talked about at the very end of the keynotes around natural language applications, natural language firewall rule changes, natural language policy changes. Think about how many times you've had a conversation with a customer, it's like we have a 10,000 line AC on this firewall, we don't know why, we're never going to touch it. Those days are yeah. going to be over soon. And you just brought this full circle, I love yeah. it. You just brought our security conversation, AI, all this back to yeah. something everyone here in the DevNet zone loves, which is the idea of declarative programming. Yes. Like a Terraform style idea, can we be declarative about the thing that we want? You just described that. Can I go to an AI and say, I don't know how to do this, but mm -hmm. can you just put in a rule that accomplishes this for me using human language? And with our tools, we should be able to say, yeah, no problem. The, the, it, it can make a recommendation, yeah, this is what you put in, and now I've just declared that I just need something to happen, and it can then happen. So if you ask it to do something it shouldn't do, do you think it might say, I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave? As long as it says it exactly like that. Yeah. Don't use my name, it's got to say, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. Yeah, yes, that <laughs> yes. would be Full Fantastic. circle for all of us. Excellent. Eric, thank you so much for being here. I really Jeff, appreciate it. It's a great pleasure, it's been my amazing friend. Cisco Live, and thanks everyone for watching. Thank you.